Hello students, today we will discuss about the lymphatic drainage of head and neck. Now when you will see the lymphatic drainage of head and neck, you will find around 60 to 70 lymph nodes. These lymph nodes are present in the head and neck region. These lymph nodes are arranged into the superficial group and deep group. So the first and important line which you have to understand that the lymphatic drainage of head and neck occurs in two sets of lymph nodes. One is the superficial, another is the deep. Now when we will talk about the superficial group, this superficial group present along the lower part of the head where you have the junction of neck and this lower part of the head. Now this part extends from the chin, then you will have the base of mandible, mastoid process and posteriorly it will reach to the occiput. So in this region, you are having the arrangement of superficial group and that is arranged like a collar. When you will see the deep group, deep group of lymph nodes are embedded deeply around the carotid sheath. Now when you will see the carotid sheath, mainly we will talk about internal jugular vein. Now in this diagram, you can appreciate both the groups. Now this is the groups of the lymph node which are present along the lower border of mandible. That means it is a superficial group of lymph nodes. Now these are the lymph nodes which are present along the internal jugular vein. That means these are the deep group of lymph nodes. Clear? Now the lymph nodes from the superficial groups ultimately drains directly or indirectly into the deep group. That means whatever the lymphatics are there, it is purified first by the superficial group of lymph nodes and then it will drain into the deep group of lymph nodes. Now <clears throat> from the deep group, this lymph node is conveyed to the jugular lymph trunks. Now what are these? These are the trunks. So you will have one right jugular lymph trunk, left jugular lymph trunk. Now this is the question for your exam that where these jugular trunk will go and terminates. So when you will see the left side of jugular trunk, this left jugular trunk will terminate into the terminal part of thoracic duct. And you know that this thoracic duct ultimately opens at the junction of left subclavian and left internal jugular vein. So the left trunk terminates into the thoracic duct. While you will have the right jugular trunk. Now this right jugular trunk terminates at the junction of right subclavian and right internal jugular vein junction. Now in this diagram, you can see that this all are your superficial group of lymphatics. Now from these lymphatics, you have the lymph that will go into the deep group. From the deep group, you will have these jugular trunks and these jugular trunks will ultimately drain into their respective site. Now here you can see that after removing this sternocleidomastoid, which is actually the superficial muscle in the lateral part of the neck, you are able to see the internal jugular vein. And around the internal jugular vein, the lymph nodes are present are known as deep cervical group of lymph nodes. Now in this diagram, if you will see, you can appreciate both superficial and deep group. Now, this is the area where you can see the superficial group of lymph nodes, but in this part, you can see the deep group of lymph nodes. Now, deep group of lymph nodes are present in the form of a vertical chain. Now, as I already told you that from the lower part of the deep group, you will have the terminal part and this is known as jugular trunk. Now, this jugular trunk is present on both right and left side. So this is on the right side and this is on the left side. Now this left jugular trunk is going to open in this beaded appearance duct which is known as thoracic duct while this right side jugular trunk will directly open into the venous system at the junction of right subclavian and right internal jugular vein. Now, what about the superficial group of lymph nodes? We will discuss the superficial and deep groups one by one. 
Now, when you will see the superficial group, which I already told you, they are arranged along this basal part of the head and they are known as regional group of lymph nodes. Regional group means that they are named according to the different regions like mental group, submandibular group, parotid group, occipital group, so on. So, when you will see the superficial group of lymph nodes, they are divided furtherly into the two groups. One is known as outer group, another is known as inner group. Now, when you will see the outer group of lymph nodes, they are present just junction of head and neck and they are known as pericervical collar. Pericervical collar means these lymph nodes are appears like a collar all around the cervical region. The inner circle, now see, you have to first understand that there is a one outer circle of lymphatics which are present at the junction of your neck and your head and these are known as outer circle lymph nodes. Now deep to this outer circle, you will have the inner circle lymph nodes. Now these inner circle lymph nodes are arranged around the upper end of respiratory tract and elementary tract and these are for example like pretracheal group of lymph nodes, retropharyngeal group of lymph nodes, prelaryngeal group of lymph nodes. So you will find that both outer circle as well as inner circle are considered as a superficial group of lymph nodes. Deep to, deep to this circle, you will have the midline structures. Suppose here you will have the two carotid arteries. This is your trachea, this is esophagus. So what will happen that around this, you will find the deep group of lymph nodes which are present or embedded into the carotid sheath. So when you are reading the lymphatic drainage of head and neck, you will realize that there are three labels of the lymph nodes. First and second rings are formed by the superficial and deep most or deeper areas are having the uh, deep group of cervical lymph nodes. Now outer circle lymph nodes are further divided on the basis of different reasons like first is the submental. When you are starting from the chin and going posteriorly, you will have submental, submandibular, buccal parotid, mastoid and occipital. So these are the six groups which are having the name according to the reasons. Now the two more groups which are known as detached lymph nodes and these are nothing but these are the part of outer circle itself and they has been detached from the main circle and they lies in the lower part of the anterior aspect of the neck which are present in the neck are known as superficial and anterior cervical group of lymph nodes. So let us start these lymph nodes one by one. Now in this diagram you can appreciate these are the all superficial groups which you can appreciate. So you have to first understand that anytime if anybody asks name the lymph node present along with the internal jugular vein it is always deep. But if somebody will ask name the lymph node present along the external jugular vein, then you have to keep in mind that will come under the superficial group outer circle lymph nodes and that is superficial cervical group. So that will discuss in the coming part of this slide. Now <clears throat> when you will see the inner circle group of lymph nodes, these inner circle as I already told you present around the upper part of respiratory and elementary system and these are known as prelaryngeal, pretracheal, paratracheal and retropharyngeal group of lymph nodes. So first is the submental group of lymph nodes. Now as the name suggests, submental means it is located in the submental triangle which is a part of anterior triangle and this lies just below the chin. So this is the first thing which you have to understand that below the chin, if you are talking about the lymph node, they are known as submental lymph node and they lies on the outer surface of mylohyoid muscle. Now it receives the F, uh, input fibers and these inputs or the afferents comes from the tip of tongue, floor of mouth, lower incisors and central part of the lower lip and skin of the chin. 
Now, this is very, very important question for your exams. Now, you have to understand this. If you see this diagram, this is your tip of tongue. Now, this is the tip of tongue which is going into the submental lymph nodes. So, these are the submental lymph nodes. Now, this is the tip which is draining into these submental lymph nodes. So, they are draining here. Now, the another important thing is that not only the tip of tongue, but the center part of your lower lip. Now, this is the most commonly asked question. It is not draining the whole lip. It is draining only this center portion of your lower lip plus the adjacent inner side lower incisor. So, you have to keep these three points basically in always in your mind when you are talking about the submental lymph nodes that tip of tongue, central part of the lower lip and lower incisor. Now, whatever the lymph is collecting into the submental ultimately drain into the submandibular group of lymph nodes. Now, <clears throat> when you see the submandibular group as the name suggests, it is present in the submandibular triangle or you can say digastric triangle. It lies in contact with the submandibular gland or sometimes some lymph node embedded into the gland. Now, this is again very important information because we will have the question based on this information. Now, from where you receive the lymph into the submandibular group? One is front of the scalp or the forehead. So, your forehead is draining into the submandibular. You will have the lateral aspect of the nose which is draining into the submandibular. You will have the cheek and angle of the mouth. Then upper and lower lip. But, but dear students, the question comes is it is not draining the whole both lips. Why? Because I just told you that central part of the lower lip is drained into the submental group of lymph nodes. In the same way, it drains the upper and lower teeth, but except the lower incisors, which you cannot forget here because they also drain into the submental group of lymph nodes. In the same way, you have the anterior two third of tongue drains into the submandibular except the tip of tongue which again drain into the submental group of lymph nodes. So, whenever you are reading the submandibular group of lymph node, which areas you have to exclude, there are three main parts which you have to exclude. One is the central part of your lower lip, lower incisors and tip of tongue. Apart from that, it drains the sinuses that is the frontal maxillary and ethmoidal sinus. It drains the floor of mouth. It drains the upper and lower gums and it drains the submental group of lymph nodes. Clear? Now, in this diagram, you can see that this is the submandibular group of lymph node. They lies into the digastric triangle and they are receiving this lateral part of the nose. They are receiving the upper lip, they are receiving the angle of mandible, the angle of mouth, they are receiving the lower lip, but except the center part, they are receiving some form from the forehead. Now, what about the buccal group? Now, buccal group is also known as facial group of lymph node and these buccal group are having one or two lymph nodes only. They lies on the buccinator muscle and they drain the adjacent part of the cheek and lower eyelid and ultimately the lymph from this group will drain into the submandibular and ultimately into the deep group of lymph nodes. Now, what about the parotid group? So, when you are moving from anterior to posterior side, we have started from the submental, then submandibular, then buccal. Now, we will move to the parotid group. Now, the parotid is also known as pre-auricular group of lymph nodes. They are situated within the parotid gland or in, in the superficial part of the parotid gland and from where it receives the uh, lymph, they receives the lymph from the scalp above the parotid gland. So, the scalp area above the parotid gland is known as temporal region. They receive the lymph from the eyelids, parotid gland itself, lateral surface of the auricle and the anterior wall of external acoustic meters. This is something which you have to understand because when you will see the 
further uh, in this lecture you will realize that different walls will drain into the different parts. So anterior wall of external acoustic meters. Now here you can see that these are the lymph nodes which are present in the parotid region which are also known as preauricular area. Now in this part the lymph comes mainly from this part that is known as temporal area plus the lymph of this parotid gland itself plus the anterior wall of external acoustic meatus and the area which is uh, auricle. Clear? Now we will move behind this you will have the retroauricular or mastoid group. Mastoid group lies on the mastoid process. So you will have the muscle here is sternocleidomastoid. So this group of lymph nodes present superficial to this muscle and this area drains the part of the scalp which is adjacent to this. So here you have the mastoid group of lymph node. Now it is receiving the lymph from adjacent part of the scalp. It is also receiving the posterior wall of external acoustic meters. So here you can see anterior wall is draining into the parotid while posterior wall is draining into the mastoid group. Ultimately the lymph from this, this group of lymph nodes are draining into the deep group. Then you will have posterior most occipital group. Now this occipital group of lymph nodes are present near the posterior triangle apex. Now here you can see this is the posterior triangle. Now near the apex of posterior triangle you will have the occipital group of lymph nodes. So these lymph nodes are come here in relation with the occipital artery and they are receiving the lymph from the posterior part of the scalp. So these all areas are draining here into these group of lymph nodes. Now ultimately the lymph from here will also drain into the supraclavicular group of lymph node. Then you will have the superficial cervical nodes. Now I told you that there are two more outer cervical lymph nodes, superficial and anterior cervical. Now superficial cervical group of lymph nodes run along with the external jugular vein. Now here in this diagram first you have to understand the position of external jugular vein and anterior jugular vein. Now here you can see that this is your external jugular vein. Now this external jugular vein crosses the sternocleidomastoid superficially. And apart from that you will have the anterior jugular vein which is here present in front of the neck both side of midline. So here you will have anterior jugular vein and on the sternocleidomastoid you will have the external jugular vein. So anterior jugular vein and external jugular vein both are superficial veins. So the superficial cervical group of lymph node present along the external jugular vein and it drains the skin of your around the angle of jaw and below the your uh, area which is present here in the anterior triangle. It receives the skin over the parotid gland, lobule and floor of external acoustic meatus. So what you are able to understand that when you will see the external acoustic meatus, its lymph is draining into the parotid group, it is also draining into the mastoid group and it is also draining into the external jugular vein lymph nodes which are known as superficial cervical. Now <clears throat> apart from this ear, it is also draining the parotid gland skin. Not the gland but only the skin which are covering at the angle of jaw and the parotid region. Then you will have the anterior cervical. Now anterior cervical group of lymph node present along the anterior jugular vein. So whenever you are having this question in exam that which are the jugular veins are having the lymph node. So one is the internal jugular vein but internal jugular vein is having the deep group. Then you will have external jugular vein and anterior jugular vein. External jugular and anterior jugular veins are having the superficial group of lymph nodes. Now this anterior cervical group of lymph nodes which are present along the anterior jugular vein drains the skin which is below the hyoid bone. Clear? Now we will move to the inner circle of superficial group. Now I told you that inner circle is present around the upper end of respiratory and alimentary tract where you will have the four main group prelaryngeal, pretracheal, paratracheal and retropharyngeal. Now in this group, now here you can see that these are the sum of lymph nodes which are present here and these are present along the upper part of respiratory system. So one is the prelaryngeal group, 
Now, pre-laryngeal group is in the relation of the conus elasticus, that is the lower part of the larynx below the vocal cord, and it drains this part of the larynx. Then you will have pre-tracheal. Pre-tracheal is present in front of the trachea, but above the isthmus of the thyroid gland, and this pre-tracheal drains the trachea as well as the thyroid gland also. Then you will have paratracheal, which is present in the tracheoesophageal group, and lastly, there is a retrof uh, retropharyngeal group of lymph node. Now, these retropharyngeal group of lymph nodes present behind the pharynx but in front of the vertebral column in the gap that is known as retropharyngeal space. And these lymph nodes drain the posterior pharyngeal wall, vertebral columns, they also drain the auditory tube, middle ear cavity. So, this is again the important to understand the retropharyngeal lymph nodes and the area drained by them. Now, you have the deep cervical group of lymph nodes. So, till here we have finished the superficial group. In the superficial group, you are ha uh, having the two chain, outer chain of the lymph nodes, inner. Outer you will have the regional lymph node and inner you are having around the upper end of the respiratory system and elementary canal. Now, in the deep group, now deep group lymph nodes are, I told you, present around the internal jugular vein or embedded into the carotid sheath and they are arranged in a form of vertical chain and that chain lies in relation to the internal jugular vein and you know that carotid sheath is deep to the sternocleidomastoid. So, this deep group is also covered by sternocleidomastoid muscle. They receive lymph from all the superficial group. They divided into the upper and lower part. Now, when you will have this chain of the lymph node, this chain is divided into the two part upper cervical and lower cervical group of lymph nodes. Now, these are known as jugulodigastric. Jugulodigastric is a upper group of deep cervical and jugulohomohyoid is lower deep cervical group of lymph nodes. So, first we will see the jugulodigastric group. Now, in this diagram, you can appreciate that this is your internal jugular vein and here you can see the lymph nodes are present along the internal jugular vein. And you can appreciate that we have cut the sternocleidomastoid and after cutting the sternocleidomastoid, only you can appreciate the internal jugular vein. So, when you will see this type of uh, appearance, you will find that this is the upper group of lymph node and these are known as jugulodigastric and this is the lower group of lymph node which are known as jugulohomohyoid group of lymph nodes. Now, in both these diagrams, what you are able to understand that this is the upper group and this upper group which is known as jugulodigastric, they lies in relation to the angle of jaw. Now, here you can see that this is your angle of jaw or angle of mandible. Now, just in deep to this angle of mandible, you are having this group of lymph node which is known as jugulodigastric and here you will have the posterior belly of digastric. This is the posterior belly of digastric. So, jugulodigastric lymph nodes are located deep to the angle of mandible in relation to the posterior belly of digastric. Now, when you will have the jugulohomohyoid, they are lower deep cervical group and they are in relation to this intermediate tendon of homohyoid and upper belly of homohyoid muscle. Now, what about the situation? So, jugulodigastric, I just told you, they lies posterior belly of digastric muscle and the important thing is behind the angle of mandible. Now, this jugulodigastric lymph node mainly receives the lymph from palatine tonsil. So, this is the question of your exam that whenever there is a tonsillitis, whenever there is an inflammation of the tonsil, which group of lymph node enlarge first? Answer is deep group, but more specifically jugulodigastric group of lymph node. Now, they also receive some part of the lymph from the tongue. When you will have the jugulohomohyoid, where they are placed, they are placed in the lower part of the neck along the lower part of the internal jugular vein and they lies in relation to the intermediate tendon of your omohyoid muscle. Now, they mainly receive the tongue, so they are known as principal lymph nodes of the tongue. So, this is the important thing to understand what is the difference. So, this upper lymph nodes are mainly receiving from the tonsil while this lower group of lymph nodes are mainly receiving the lymph of your tongue. Now, at the end, 
there are two three applies one is known as virchow's gland now what is virchow's gland these are nothing but some of your lower lymph nodes of deep cervical group so this is the first question that what is virchow's gland virchow's glands are nothing but these are the some diseases related to the deep group of lymph node not the superficial one so this is the first thing to understand now what will happen that some of the deep cervical extend down and reach in front of the scalenius anterior so they will come in the supraclavicular region into the relation of scalenius anterior now what will happen in case of malignancies of stomach that means whenever the malignancy will occur the cells will metastasize and they will migrate from the primary site of cancer to these lymph node and these lymph node will get, get enlarged and they, this problem will most commonly occur in the left side and this is again the question of your exam and left sided enlarge these deep group of lymph nodes are known as virchow's gland clear now we'll move to the one more question on the basis of clinical scenario that there is a condition in which a 60 year old person who is a chronic tobacco chewer now this chronic tobacco chewing is a pre cancerous condition and it will lead to the sore on the right side of patient tongue so this patient which is having the sore uh, came to the surgeon on examination surgeon noted that there is ulcer and this ulcer is involving the right lateral margin of the anterior part of the tongue now on palpation the enlarged hard submandibular group of lymph nodes and lower deep cervical group of lymph nodes were revealed so this is the important thing to understand that the lateral part of the tongue will drain into the submandibular group of lymph node i told you that tip will drain into the submental what the remaining part will drain into the submandibular and ultimately the submandibular will drain into the deep group of lymph nodes so what will happen because of the ulcer on the right lateral margin there is a involvement of the submandibular and ultimately the and ultimately the deep cervical group of lymph nodes the surgeon operated on the patient and surgically removed his right half of the tongue along with the submandibular gland now this is the important to understand that that surgeon not only done the hemiglossectomy he is not only removed the right half of the tongue but along with that the gland also has been removed now to remove remove these all structures in the submandibular region he made a incision 4 cm below the angle of mandible now there are three question based on this case why what is the lymphatic drainage of tongue so that you can write down tip drain into the submental lateral part drain into the your submandibular and posterior part drain into the jugulo omohyoid group of lymph node now why submandibular gland was removed with this uh, why this gland was removed along with the tongue the reason is that this uh, uh, gland was removed along with the tongue because you know submandibular lymph nodes are embedded inside the gland and because it is a cancer of the tongue so those cancer cells has been migrated into the submandibular group of lymph node and those lymph node embedded inside the gland so the doctor has to remove or the surgeon has to remove the gland along with the tongue then why the incision was taken 4 cm below the angle of mandible the incision was taken 4 cm below the angle of mandible because adjacent to the mandible if you will make a incision there may be chances to injure the cervical branch of the facial nerve so to avoid the injury of the cervical branch of the facial nerve the surgeon make a incision more downward that is 4 cm below to avoid the injury to this nerve so at the end of this class now you are able to understand the orientation about the superficial and deep group of lymph node and the important thing is why these lymph nodes are important and what are the different name of these lymph nodes so this is all for today's class thank you